Thanks for that, everybody. Um, thanks for your time tonight and braving the um, weather and the conditions to come out and hear about these companies. Um, as said, as was mentioned, my name's Richard Walanski, I'm the Finance Director of, of Ovation. Um, uh, what I'm going to um, try and do tonight is explain Ovation's business model to you. Um, I'm going to talk about the half-year results which were released two days ago on Monday, so it's very timely that you hear this presentation. And then I'm going to give you some information about what we're going to do in the future so you can decide for yourself whether the company is investable or, or not. Um, Ovation is a company that's listed on the London Stock Exchange and we've been around for 12 years. So we've got a bit of experience behind us. The share price history in those 12 years that it's, is that it's gone from 4p to £2.29 that it closed at today. So it's a very successful company in, in doing what it does. Um, so what you want to hear is, uh, hopefully, is <laughs> what Ovation exactly does. We're an aircraft um, lessor. Um, what an aircraft lessor is is... Uh, we simply own commercial passenger aircraft. Um, not many of you would have flown here tonight because most of the flights were cancelled. But um, what we do is we own the asset and we um, rent them to the airlines. It's just really as simple as that. Um, half of the commercial passenger aircraft on the planet are owned by lessors like us. It's about 25,000 planes flying around the world today. Um, and almost half of those are owned by lessors. The um, analogy to help you understand the business model, because it's a very simple business model, is that, it, that owning a plane is a lot like owning a flat to let. You go and find the asset, which is you know, the apartment, or in this case, a commercial passenger aircraft. You find a tenant, you, you buy the asset, and you know, in most cases we use bank debt to buy that asset, just like you will with a, an apartment. And then you find a tenant to put in that, apartment um, to, you know, to help you fund that uh, mortgage uh, repayment. The analogy breaks down in that these are much better investments. Uh, the analogy breaks down in two key ways. A plane, a commercial passenger aircraft, it, um, uh, will generate about 12% yield per year. That is, if you buy a $100 million plane, it'll generate $12 million a year rent. The second, where, the second area that the analogy breaks down is that typically with an aircraft, when we rent it to an airline or lease it to an airline, we'll sign a 10 or 12 year lease. So if you think in very simple mathematical terms, you know, you're going to pay off that plane inside the first lease. So if you get 12% a year for 10 years, you get back 120% of what you paid for that plane. So it, pays off all the debt, you own that plane outright. And planes, aircraft, commercial passenger aircraft, live for 25 years. So after that, it's free, free money, effectively. And um, I'll explain a little bit more about the business model um, 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 further. So our model is that we like to invest in brand new or young aircraft and we like to put 10 or 12 year leases on them so that they follow that simple payback rule where the rent that you collect in the first lease um, pays off the plane and you own it outright. So we release these, this presentation on, um, on our website. I've got a hard copy out the, out the front there for you with my business card as well. We released uh, our results on our half year results. So our half year is to 31 December on Monday morning. Um, I hosted, and uh, with, along with the chairman and our senior executive, we hosted an investor update call at 1pm on Monday in which we presented this presentation. A copy of that webcast is available on our website, uh, but I'll take you, take you through it now. This is a snapshot of where the organisation sits today after 12 years of operation, as at, well, as at 31 December at least. So we have 37 aircraft that we own. Um, those, airline, those aircraft are split between 12 different airlines in nine countries around the world. And we invest in turboprop, 
small aircraft, we invest in the most common types of aircraft that you will, uh, planes that you'll fly on, which are called narrow body aircraft. These are the Boeing 737s and Airbus A320 that you're probably familiar with. If you're not familiar with them, the Boeing is the Ryan airplane, the Airbus is the EasyJet plane. Um, and we also, in, in, we've now recently, in, the, in this last half just completed, started investing in larger aircraft or twin aisle or wide body aircraft. And we took our first deliveries of wide body aircraft in December 2017 or, or a couple of months ago. And so what we've built is a, over 12 years is a leasing company that can deliver any type of plane um, to the airlines. However, we only invest in the most popular types of aircraft. And the reason for that is, is that there are only two main key risks in our business. And it's kind of the same risk that you have when investing in a, in a flat to let. One is your tenant not paying the rent. Airlines do and can go bust. And the, re the, the way that you overcome that risk is to have a good spread of airlines around the world. And you want those airlines to have very good, be strong financially, strong, strong credits. Um, the second way that you deal with that risk is you have the most popular types of aircraft because if the airline does go bust, you can take, repossess that aircraft and place it with another airline. In fact, we had to do that in the last six month period where we transitioned, where we transitioned a, um, a, a plane that was with Air Berlin that went bust last um, uh, September to EasyJet. And we did that seamlessly and we did it quickly and we made a large profit doing it because planes are actually in short supply. There's a five, six year waiting list to buy a brand new plane from Airbus or Boeing. And um, the other main risk is residual value risk of the asset. You know, we buy the asset, you know, we want the tenant to pay it off, but we've got to sell it eventually. Now, the residual value risk is more a paper, on paper risk than a real risk. We're not talking about the GFC where you know, a bunch of American, uh, you know, pop, of the, the American populace owned a $500,000 house and owed $700,000 on it. You know, we pay our planes off, but we will sell them. The nature of investing in these portfolio of yield producing assets is that we want to sell the old stuff to redeploy that capital to buy new stuff. And so what you want is planes that <clears throat> hold their residual value well. That's the other reason why you invest in very popular aircraft, because they have long lives and multiple uses uh, for the airlines. We, cons we consider our investment in those 37 aircraft as just an investment in 37 yield producing assets. And what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, because all we do is collect 37 rent checks a month. That's all we do. And we make 37 payments to the bank a month to pay those aircraft down. And it kind of works like this. If you sign a lease for 10 years, you sign it at a fixed rate lease. So if you've got a $100 million plan, you get you know, $12 million a year, you'll get a million dollars a month, one check per month, and then you might have borrowed $80 million on that plane and you'll just make your monthly uh, repayment. And if you sign a, t if typically we try to take all the risk out of our business. We do everything in US dollars, um, so there's no currency risk. So we buy planes, sell planes, rent and finance them in US dollars, make all our debt repayments in US dollars. If we sign a 10 year lease, we'll get a 10 year bit of debt. And that debt will amortise to zero over those 10 years. And that's how the plane pays its, and we just use the rent to amortise that debt down to zero. So very, very simple in terms of um, uh, the approach. It's a, it's a keep it simple, stupid business model. It really is. Um, and the way that we measure the risk in the portfolio, or think about the risk in the portfolio, is, is how old the plant, these assets are because they have a finite life. And our, uh, the average of, our, of the 37 planes is 2.9 years. That's actually, of the lessors in the world, that's the youngest fleet in the world. It's low risk because they've got another 22 years to produce income. And the other way that we, other key risk that we look at is how long will they, how long has the current leases on each of those planes got to run? And currently it's 7.9 years. So if you think about um, your flat to lead analogy, you know, we'll sign, instead of one or two year leases, we'll sign 12 year leases. And instead of making two or three or four percent a year rent, you know, we make 12 percent a year rent. So it's a very lucrative business. 
Um, as of 31 December, we, and look, the reason to invest in this company, as I said, not only the share price has gone from 4p to £2.29, but it's a growth company. On average, we double the size of this company every two and a half years. And when we buy, we double the, when, when I talk about double, I mean doubling the fleet assets, the aircraft that we own, the value of the aircraft that we own. And we just hit a record at 31 December, 30, uh, billion dollars of aircraft, one US billion dollars of aircraft. And from 1 July to 31 December, we actually grew the, that, that was growth of 35% in six months. Now, obviously, if you have a billion dollars worth of equipment or, uh, you know, and they're generating around 12% yield, you know, your income is around $120 million. In fact, our annualised rental return on that fleet is $115 million. That's how much revenue that we've got contracted to be delivered by those. And what that is, is $9.6 billion of rent collections per month. That's where we sit today. So if we collect that $115 million for, on the average of 7.9 years, we've actually got $860 million of contracted income that the airlines owe us um, coming to us. As simple as that. And we've got about $800 million worth of debt today. We've got total assets, because we've got about 80 or $90 million of cash and some other assets, but it's mainly aircraft. So we've got $1.1 in total assets. We've got about $800 million in debt. We've got $860 million in revenue to pick up. So what will actually happen over those 7.9 years is the rent will pay down all of the debt that we effectively have. And at the end of those eight years, we'll have 11-year-old planes, three plus eight is 11, um, which we... Typically, what will happen in 19, 19 cases out of 20 is that the airlines will extend that lease for another five or seven years. And, and then our business model is to probably sell them around the 15 or 16 year, year mark. The other thing that we have is that we've got options to buy more planes from the manufacturer. Uh, we've actually got um, 30 options and, and six orders in place today that will help us grow our fleet. And the value of the planes associated with those options is the 600 million. So we can grow our fleet from a billion to 1.6 billion uh, simply by um, delivering those um, options in as planes into our fleet and, and renting them to airlines. So this is the financial result for the six months. So this is just a half year to 31 December. We had total revenue of $52.4 million, which is up 16% year on year, a record number for the half year. Um, of that, lease revenue accounted for almost $42 million. Um, so there was some other revenue on top of the, um, on top of the lease revenue, I'll, I'll explain that. That's revenue associated with that transition of the Air Berlin plane to EasyJet. We had operating profit of $25 million. Um, we had total profit after tax of $7 million. The fleet assets hit a $1 billion. Earnings per share of 10 cents, um, and we brought down our average cost of debt. The results were, were uh, there was a slight decline year on year from um, where we were a year ago. And the reason for that is, is that in June 2017, we sold $100 million worth of planes for a large, for a, a large profit, and we paid a good dividend to shareholders. So I think the dividend was up, I think, 80% or something like that. We paid six US cents per share dividend. So while this is a growth company in that as we grow the fleet, the, sh the, the revenue goes up, the earnings go up and the share price goes up, we do pay a dividend and it's, it yields about 2%. Um, but it's not, you don't buy this stock for, for, for its dividend, you buy this because the share price is going to go up as we grow the fleet. So we started at 1 July with the fleet that was um, $100 million smaller and so the revenue base was smaller. And what, and what we said in our full year results as at 30 June was that we're going to redeploy that capital, build the fleet up again, get the revenue base up again. And that's exactly what we, we did. We delivered 35% growth to the fleet from 1 July. Uh, we added $286 million worth of planes to take the total to, to a billion dollars. And, we t and that, and that um, 
the, and if you think about the, 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 the numbers that I've already mentioned, the $9.6 million per month in, in rental collections, well, that's what we're going to collect from January to June this year to, to, to complete the financial year. That's $57.5 million in rent. So the first half we, in, rent, in lease rent, we generated just under 42. But in the second half, we've get, this is the best visibility we've ever given the stock market on what we're going to generate in revenue for the second half. So we're going to add another $57.5 million in rent. So we're going to generate about $110 million for this year in terms of, in, uh, of rent revenue. And, the, see the, and the, the thing that you can obviously understand about adding a lot of growth in assets is that you see in December you see those assets in the balance sheet which is up by 35%. And obviously you've increased liabilities because you've borrowed money to buy some of those planes. But what those planes didn't do in December was contribute any, because they came at, you know, at the end of the financial period, was they didn't contribute any meaningful revenue or earnings to that financial period. So the company is set up for the second half of the financial year and in fact for the next 7.9 years to generate much higher revenue and much higher earnings for the shareholders. So it is a good time to hear this story because, you know, I, I think that um, because the, the, the results were relatively flat year on year, people are saying, oh, well, you know, look, that's not, that, not much has happened. But we have built the fleet by 35% in that six months and that fleet is generating $9.6 million a month. You know, f you know, this month, last month and for the, for the next, you know, for the next eight years. So, you know, revenues and earnings are going to grow significantly. So what we actually did was that we added four aircraft in December worth about $286 million. And that's taken that annualised revenue to $115 million. Um, as I mentioned, we had, a, um, we had an airline go bust. Um, we had an Airbus A320 with Air Berlin. Uh, we bought that plane a few years ago. Um, and uh, Air Berlin had its problems. And we seamlessly, because it's a very popular asset, we seamlessly transitioned that to EasyJet, um, and EasyJet are, pay, are paying you know, rent on that now. So we've um, redeployed the asset so it doesn't stop generating rent. And that's the our whole idea of buying popular aircraft. And what happened in terms of, if you look at our result, and we mentioned this in Monday's r &S, is that when an airline... Um, rents a plane off us or leases a plane off us. They have to do all the maintenance. They have to pay the insurance. As I said, all we do is pick up a rent cheque per month. One of, the th one of the things we do to ensure that they do the maintenance is we take um, maintenance reserves from them, which means that as every month goes by, not only do they pay the rent, but they pay us cash, which goes towards um, that plane going into the shop and being repaired at the end of the lease. Because they've got to return it to it, it to us in the condition that it came to them. And as we buy new planes, that plane has got to have a full refurbishment and have zero hours on all the components. So they pay us, what we require them to do is pay us cash every month to make sure that after the 10 year leases they can afford to put that plane in the shop. Because it can cost 10 to 15 million dollars on a 50 million dollar plane to refurbish it. And so we collect that rent every month and we record it as a liability that we will pay back to them when they put that plane in the shop. When Air Berlin defaulted, it actually, they'd already paid us $10.5 million towards that refurbishment. So when it defaulted, that cash actually becomes ours. So we, the, the, the liability is extinguished um, and we got to keep the $10.5 million. Fantastic result for us. Um, of course, in our balance sheet, and you'll see this in the RNS as well. And this is the flip side, because there's always a little bit of bad news with the good news. And the bad news is this, is that in our balance sheet, we recorded that plane as, you know, we record the value of the aircraft as this is the value of a plane that we expected to get back in full life condition from, um, from Air Berlin, plus the NP net present value of all the, the contracted lease payments that Air Berlin were going to pay. So that's what it sits in our balance sheet as. Now, obviously, when they go bankrupt, you can cross out the NPV on the future lease returns because they're not going to pay us any more rent. But we've replaced that with EasyJet's rent, so there's no problem there. The key difference is that that's no longer going to be a full-life plane because what we gave to EasyJet was a, a half-life plane or a partially used plane. 
They're happy. Airlines around the world are happy to receive that as long as they're, they are only required to re replace, to return that plane in the same condition that they got it. And that created an $8 million impairment in the value of that asset on our balance sheet. But when you're taking $10.5 million on the upside, that plane made us a $2.5 million profit. Now, to understand how lucrative that is, last year we had 35 planes and our total bottom line profit was $21 million. Now, if you divide $21 million by 35 planes, it means that planes generate, I don't know, roughly, what is it, $600,000 profit per year each. That Air Berlin plane, through the bankruptcy and the transition to EasyJet, generated us $2.5 million profit this year. And this is a testament to us buying well. What we do, and what our IP is, is that we have very strict investment criteria. We look at the airline credit, we look at the type of plane, the engines, the seat configuration, all of these things to buy well, just like you buy stocks and shares well. And if you buy fundamentally well, those assets will return great, will generate great long-term returns for you. So we added new customers to, we got 12 customers. I'll just wrap it up now. Um, we um, issued some unsecured debt at a premium, which means that the market uh, wants to invest in our company. Um, what we're, all we're about with our business is um, building a bigger fleet. So we want to build a bigger fleet. We want to spread the fleet out amongst a range of customers to diversify that risk. We want to invest in different types of popular aircraft so we, we haven't got too many eggs in one basket. We want to get economies of scale because we're only 20 staff in this business. Um, and so out of $115 million of uh, rent collections, all our staff and office and advertising and travel and everything that we do costs under $10 million. So it's relatively cheap. The only other things that we do is we depreciate the planes, which are, is a non-cash item, but, and then we just pay, the, and pay down the debt and pay the interest cost. That's, that's all our P&L looks like. Um, the, the, the thing that you need to know about this industry and why it's so lucrative and why we're doing so well is simply this. And this is really to wrap this presentation up. Boeing and Airbus manufacture, I think, around 97 or 98% of all commercial passenger aircraft. They're an effective duopoly. It doesn't exist in any other very large industry on the planet. And they are increasing production about 5% per year. It's very hard to increase production by more than that because they've got planes of millions of bits in them, pieces in them, and they've got hundreds or thousands of, of companies supplying parts to them. But passenger traffic last year grew at 7.5% per year. That's the demand for aircraft. So if the supply of aircraft is only growing by 5%, but the demand for aircraft is growing by 7%, you've got a very... That means aircraft price is going to be high, um, lease um, rates are going to be high, and our business is going to be very successful. So that's our fleet of 37 aircraft. Um, they're very young aircraft, and, and we've actually been improving the age and the average lease term over the last couple of years. That's how our, air, that's our customers spread out against the world. We've got about 30% in Europe, 30% in Asia, and 30% in Australia. And I'll finish really um, with these last couple of slides quickly. This is the company two and a half years ago, and this is the company today. Two and a half years ago, for the full year, we generated $56.9 million in revenue. For the full year. And I've already told you that our annualised revenue collection now is 115 million. That's the growth in two and a half years. We only had a few customers and we we're very focused on Virgin Australia. We've actually managed to diversify our revenue stream significantly, which means that this company is much lower risk and has a better, um, um, uh, better or, or a, a stronger earning stream in it at lower risk. And so you can see that the, the company's, I think, far more investable now at a billion dollars of assets, a hundred million dollars of revenue, and we've got a market cap now of over 150 million pound. And so what we're seeing is that more institutions are buying into the shares of this company because it, you know, we've got the track record, um, we've got the size, we've got the scale. That's the growth rate over since 2011. 
from $165 million in assets to over a billion dollars in assets since 2011. <coughs> I won't go through the P&L and the ratios because you can read, the, read about that in the RNS. And I'll finish with this, which is we've just reported record fleet growth. The aircraft or the airline industry is doing extremely well. We've got um, a very low risk um, uh, fleet with great metrics in terms of age and lease term. Um, we're diversifying and we're growing and we're actually also lowering our costs of debt. So it's, it's a pretty good picture to look at at the moment. I'm sorry I've sort of gone into question time a little bit. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll add, if we may, we've mm. um, got time for one, maybe two. Yeah, go good. So, so two, two related questions. Yeah. Um, first of all, thank you for the very clear presentation. That was really good. Um, it looks a really good business, um, as you say, if you can um, make 12% and borrow money at 4%, it sounds good. That's exactly so, what so, our, so, you've hit it now on well, the head, well, of exactly the, what our business well, is. Well, the, the two related questions are, first of all, um, why do airlines do it? Because they could do it themselves. Yep. And the, um, the, the second question is, if it's such a good business from your point of view, um, why don't more, uh, more companies do it? And I'm sure okay. you have competitors, so that, that's, yeah, that's the other end. So you understand two parts of the question. So why don't airlines do it themselves? Um, 20 years ago, one in eight planes were leased. Today, it's every second plane. There's an increasing requirement from the airlines to, to lease plane. It actually fit, it fits their modern day business model better than it did 20 years ago. Airlines today, well, and you'll know this, British Airways is the greatest example of this. British Airways 15 years ago was famous for flying one in every three seats empty. And that's called load factor, 66% load factor. Today, oh, well, last week, I think IAG reported its results, and it now puts 81% bums on seats. Imagine what that does to the bottom line. They know that if they can fill a plane, they can rent one quickly. Um, it takes The waiting list for planes is six or seven years. Lessors have access to aircraft. And so banks would rather lend to us with a clean balance sheet than lend to an airline that's got thousands of employees, pension problems, union problems, um, supply problems, you name it, government, you know, jurisdictional problems. And so, where, you know, why do people um, take mortgages from banks to buy a house? Because they are the primary source of finance, and that's exactly what we are to the industry. Very capital intensive. Now, the cheapest plane we sell, which is a 72-seat turboprop, costs $20 million. The most recent acquisition that we did of a Boeing triple, brand new Boeing 777-300ER, the most popular wide-body plane on the planet, is close to $150 million. It, you know, and airlines have hundred, big airlines have hundreds of planes. They just don't have the capital to afford it. And that's why we're necessary and why we're actually, the trend is going towards more leasing. In terms of competitors, look, there are only eight listed lessors on the planet. There are four in the US. Um, I can send you research if you contact me that um, compares us to them. We're the smallest of those eight. And we're growing at the rate we are. The biggest company in the world that does what we do is GE. They've got over $40 billion worth of aircraft, close to 1,500 aircraft themselves. And they operate exactly the same business model that we do. Um, the reason why we can all compete and do so well in this business and we can grow at 30% a year, year upon year upon year, is this. Boeing and Airbus produce brand new 2,000 planes a year worth $200 billion. It's taken us 12 years just to get a billion of them. And every year they produce $200 billion worth of new stuff. And there's probably seven or $800,000 of second-hand planes sold every year. So we've got 2,700 opportunities and we only need to buy five, six, seven or eight to grow up 30% a year. So there's a lot of metal out there that we can buy. Um, and so we're able to, to look around, um, deploy our very strict investment criteria and to buy those four planes that we bought in, in that first six months, we probably analysed upwards of 350 to 400 planes through our investment criteria to shake out the four. We're very strict and rigid in what we do and what we invest in, and that's why our returns are so lucrative. And we don't ha we're not trying to be all things to all men. And we don't have to compete with GE, because they bid for the 50 Ryanair aircraft. We're just looking for ones and twos. And out of those 2,700 opportunities a year, we can find five or six pretty easily.